all enjoy the program without hearing um, dogs and side conversations. And even though I realize that the um, Supreme Court of the United States made toilet flushing something that is supposedly acceptable uh, during Zoom meetings, in this case, we won't hear anybody who's um, doing something other than watching the video. So um, thank you all for being here. And as I mute myself, I simply say, welcome Zoe Aqua and Annie Aqua for uh, an afternoon of music. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, we're really excited to be here and thank you to everyone who's tuning in. And um, we'll just get rolling.
Thank you. Thank you. So um, started out with a little klezmer music. Um, the first piece was recorded by a famous klezmer violinist named Steiner. And um, the second one was a Romanian folk song. The third one um, was from the Bugic family repertoire. And this is a set that we played over the summer at Klez Canada with um, some friends that we see, see in the audience. See so that last tune um, brought us all the way Okay, so um, we ended in Yash, which is all the way over in the eastern part of Romania near the border of Moldova. And now we're going to sort of do a musical journey through Transylvania. Um, if you start in Yash and drive about five hours west, you get to a village called Nadshayo that um, we've been really enjoying listening to some recordings of and learning about. And we originally got this recording called um, Serial Mem Nadshayo, which was recorded in 2006 um, from my friend Kish Puma, who is in the audience. Hi. And um, so <laughs> we got really into that recording, and then we started listening to some older recordings from Nadshayo um, made in 1965. Um, my, uh, my friend Fenveshi Attila, who's also watching, hi Attila, um, helped to like transcribe some of the recordings from back then. So we just got really into the music from this village. So we're going to play some. And for those, um, for those Americans who are not familiar with the bracha, I don't have one with me, but I'm going to be imitating playing it like this. It's normally like a viola with a flat bridge. It's pretty hard to play because, um, yeah, the flat bridge and it has like three or four strings and you play chords on it. So I'm going to be imitating that instrument. And there are, there are some like great, Brought the players in the audience today, so yeah, no pressure. <laughs>
Thank you. So um, we're going to continue on our journey west um, through Transylvania. And if you start in Nacheo and drive about an hour and a half west, you get to a village called Bonsida, which I have not been to, but I do hope to go to. Um, Bonsida music is really interesting to me. It's like kind of has an archaic and Baroque sound and the ornamentation is cool. And um, this this recording was shared to me by Kish Puma.
bravo, bravo. Thanks. So, um, we're going to continue our journey west across Transylvania, and um, if you drive about an hour and a half west from Bonsida, you get to um, Kolota Seg, which is a region that we both have been to, and um, I'll let Annie talk a little bit about that. Okay, um, I just wanted to highlight our background here. Um, these are all embroideries that we got in Kolota Seg. Um, uh, at these camps Zoe has gone to and then I just went for one day mostly to buy these things um, not for the music but to buy stuff um, sold by old ladies that embroider all these um, pillowcases and um, other tapestries also this skirt I can't see myself right now but I'm wearing a skirt that I also bought um, from old ladies at that town, and it's my favorite thing ever. So, um, we, I, I heard that some people were dancing before. We want to actually invite people to dance for this next um, tune. It's called uh, Leganyash, and um, I was joking to Annie that my entire, my entire like inspiration for doing this concert was that I, so that I could see some Hungarian friends dancing Leganyash because it's like extremely entertaining. And um, so I'm hoping like a few people who know how to dance this folk dance will dance, but I want to invite everyone to dance if you feel like it. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to attempt to watch some people dancing while I'm playing. We'll see what happens. Should I try to? <laughs> okay, cool. Do you need to see? Um... Rachash here. Oh. We're muted. Okay. Unmute. Oh no, we're, we're not muted. muted. Great. I wish we had a brachash here and a basis, but we don't, so we'll just do our best. Wait a second. <laughs> Sorry. Technical things. Ooh. All right. Wait, but are you starting with it? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I need to prepare here. This is our most exciting moment for me. So we're almost just, ready. Yeah, okay, okay, we're ready. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, special thanks to Attila for demonstrating that. Yay, Ooh. Attila. Um, great. So um, we're continuing to travel west, and we're going into the Satmar region now, which um, is on both sides of the border of Hungary and Romania. And um, interestingly, this is the region that the Satmar Hasidim came from. Um, and we're going to play some music that is from the Hungarian side. Um, and it starts with um, some Holgatok, which are like slow epic songs, and then we'll go into a rousing chardash. And normally I play this on my five string violin, which sounds a little bit more similar to the type of racha that's in this recording, but um, I don't have it.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think one thing I really like about Hungarian and Transylvanian music is um, the sort of diversity of, of chords and the rich sort of harmonic language. And that's something that inspires me in some of my own compositions, um, including one that I'm going to play next that I wrote a couple years ago and that actually does have a version with some Yiddish lyrics, but we're going to play an instrumental version. And it's inspired by both Hungarian music and klezmer. And I also dedicated the, the second song in this mini set to um, a, a great bracha teacher named um, Ratzgula.
which is like a rhythm that you find in klezmer and Romanian music. And this piece was... Um, so um, this piece um, was, you know, in the, in the vein of the rest of this concert was inspired by a travel that I did um, last summer before I met up with Annie and went to Hungary and Transylvania. <laughs> okay, so um, I was in Grodno, Belarus with um, the Yiddish Kite organization, which um, brings people to Eastern Europe to look at sites of um, Yiddish culture. And um, this song is inspired about from like walking along the riverside in, um, in Grudno and on a beautiful evening and just strolling and enjoying the evening. And also like thinking about the past and being a little bit wistful about the past, knowing that Grodno before World War II had like 48% Jewish population definitely is not the case today. So it's just a sort of wistful feeling about thinking about the past, um, but also enjoying the present and, and living in the present. Um, cool. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a brand new piece, world premiere.
have a couple more pieces for you guys. Um, so now to completely mix things up a little bit, we want to play one piece from Greece, which is um, like, like Hungarian music, like Transylvanian music, an influence on klezmer music, and um, also in tribute to our friends overseas. Um, this piece was taught to me by a great musician in Athens named Marios Papadeas, who plays the centuri. Um, and I got the opportunity to travel to Greece before the shutdown, and it was really fun, learned a few tunes. So um, Annie's going to explain a little bit more about this piece. Um, so this piece, Zoe, I think Zoe was talking a little bit about, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you mentioned it actually, but Ottoman um, Empire influence on um, this Greek, Greek music. Um, and it's a little bit different than some of the klezmer we've been playing because um, this piece has a different scale um, mode than the klezmer songs have and the Hungarian in Transylvanian. Um, and this is, um, this piece has, um, it sounds a little bit like Arabic um, scale modes. Um, they have a different term in the Greek music, but um, it would be related to like a bayati makam in Arabic music. Um, so you might hear a half flat on one of the tones in the scale. At some points in the piece we'll play. I'm not sure if you can tell, but that was like a C half flat. Um, so at some points you might hear that note. So Annie's a bit more experienced in this playing of Macomb than me, but um, give it a shot. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bravo, bravo. Thank yes, you. Aqua Sisters. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, so we have one more tune. You know what time it is? It is 12.58. Okay, great. So we have one more short tune. And um, first we want to um, commemorate all the mothers out there for Mother's Day. Yay. Yay. Go moms. We also want to say thanks to our mom. Risa, do you want to come over here? <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Yay. Great. So, um, yeah, I also want to announce, um, if you are in Denver, check out the chat. I'm collaborating with um, artist Talia Feldman and also um, Brachash Fenveshi Attila to do this video piece. It's going to be projected live in the Hilltop neighborhood. Um, we don't have a projection date yet, but we will soon. So if you're interested in that, um, I'll put up some info on my website soon and you can check out my Instagram and I'll be posting more info about that for those Denver folks. So um, yeah, we just want to say thanks to um, Maggie and Doug for, for hosting this concert. Um, thank you guys for making this happen. And also to all our friends all around the world. Um, we have people tuning in from Hungary, I think possibly Romania and Canada and all over the United States and um, we're sad that you know we're not able to see you guys in person and it's sad to not be, to have to think about like not being able to do the travel that we really like to do but it's really nice to be able to see your faces here and to be able to play for you in this virtual environment um, and you know I, th I feel like people all over the world have been really generous with like sharing resources sharing time um, and, and that's, that's really helped us with the work that we do, um, learning the music that we like to learn. So thanks to all of you. Um, great. And also we'll, we'll stick around afterwards if anyone has any questions, um, but this will be our last song. I'll just bam. Klezmer.
We um, want to thank you, Annie and Zoe, for amazing music today. Just lovely. Um, thanking the mothers who were involved behind the scenes, Maggie and Risa and Hal as well. We want to thank everybody who Zoomed in. Monitoring the participant list, we had 77 computers at one time. That's well over 100 people I have never seen. Hey, Hal. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> want to remind you all that you can find in the chat the information on the virtual tip jar. It's traditional in this uh, house concert setting to pass the hat. No, we're not, we're not and you can use the um, virtual tip jar to pass the hat. Um, there's other info there about your teachings, Zoe and Annie's teaching and the Hilltop Project. And if you want to know about uh, Five Points Live, uh, leave us your email address and we'll keep you posted if you're in Denver and want to see those concerts. If you'd like to ask a question, I think now is the time you would unmute yourself um, in the lower left hand corner or hold down the space bar while you ask the question. Anybody? I just want to say that uh, I thought the first concert was phenomenal, but uh, actually I'm kind of being reduced to having weak legs each time I stand to try to even dance or react to your performance because it's just so, it's truly so um, overwhelming on so many levels. It feels as though there's, even though in this very bizarre environment, I feel as though I'm, I'm uh, able to, to live and feel and sound and beauty in a way that uh, maybe I've never been able to do before, but but seeing the two of you, who I've known since you guys were both pretty tiny, <laughs> it's been really an absolute joy. It's great to see you like part of Hal's face, and that's great. Thank you. I wanted to know more about how you composed that piece uh, that you composed. I want to know more about, um, so what about uh, the wistful one. So, yeah. The wistful one. Um, well, Thanks, little, Lionel. Thanks, Lionel. Um, I guess I was thinking a little bit about um, German Goldenstein, who was uh, um, a musicologist and klezmer musician who collected a lot of Jacques, which was the rhythm that that piece is in, that sort of have all these sections and they kind of like, it's kind of like this wistful journey. Um, so I was, I was sort of inspired by that repertoire um, when I was writing the piece. Um, and yeah, I also want to point out that if anyone has any questions about Hungarian or Transylvanian music, there's some there's some experts on the line um, who might be willing to answer some some um, some questions about that repertoire. So if anyone has any questions. So you can push your space bar to unmute yourself if you want to uh, ask a question. You hold your space bar while you're speaking and we can all hear you. Um, feel free to uh, weigh in if you like. Yeah. Zoe and Annie, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'd like to know a little bit more about your travels and uh, um, what took you to those regions and the experience that you had there. Sure. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Well, maybe talk about the first time you went. Sure. So the first time I went to Hungary and Transylvania was in 2018, and I went with a couple of friends who are who are here, Rebecca and Matthias. Woo! And um, and we were traveling with our friend Daphne, who is from um, Montreal, and we went to a couple of different camps. Um, we went to one called Meta Tabor, which is in Hungary, and we went to one called Kolota Saint Kirai, which is in Transylvania. And um, that was a really rich experience because we met a lot of amazing players, some of whom tuned in today. Um, and it's, it's a really great opportunity to like learn this style of folk music. Um, and then last summer we went, Annie and I went back to Hungary and Transylvania and we, um, we toured around a bit. 
I don't know if you want to um, talk about that. Yeah, one of the major highlights of this trip, unfortunately we don't have it, but Zoe got a trumpet violin, um, which is a really cool folk instrument that has a uh, trumpet horn attached to a violin body. Um, yeah, this, I feel didn't like... Didn't bring it to Denver. <laughs> didn't bring it, don't know why. Super easy to pack. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that was a highlight. Um, we went to someone's studio that makes those. There aren't many makers left. Um, it's a very loud instrument. It's called a violin, strong violin. He translated it as strong violin. Yeah, and so he translated we're just playing... a regular violin as a simple violin. <laughs> yeah, we're playing simple or weak violins, <laughs> the usual <laughs> instrument for us. Great. Thank you. Anyone else, anything to add before we uh, thank them again and say so long to our Klezmerim today? I wanted to, first of all, shout out, this was so incredible and just yasher koach and what a gift. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Greek piece. Uh, it was just so phenomenal and maybe a little bit about your interactions with the composer and how you learned this very seemingly difficult piece. Yeah, so um, Annie actually knows, Annie's actually a bit more experienced in like Greek styles because of this Macomb work that she's done, but um, she wasn't able to go to Greece with me in February, but we will go back. And um, so I had the opportunity to meet this great Sandori player, Marios, who's also a singer, and he also plays like five other instruments. He's basically amazing. And um, so it, this is an old folk song, um, folk tune that he sort of taught us, and that and that's sort of the folk music style is like, you know, oral transmission. So he was like playing it, and I was transcribing the tune as he was playing it. And then also, you know, referencing, um, when I got home, I started referencing um, some older recordings of this song. Um, and and pass that along to Annie and she started learning it. Mm, amazing. Thanks. Hi, it's Lynn and Alan and Maya. Um, thanks. Uh, for, thanks you guys for putting this together. It's a really great way to spend Mother's Day. Um, definitely in not being able to see people and the music was amazing. And I love the tour of Romania. And thank you guys, Doug and Maggie, for putting this together. It's great to see some familiar faces. And I'd like to add my uh, grandfather, uh, Louis Fallick, was born in Romania in 1900 and then emigrated to uh, Canada and wound up in Cincinnati. And so you've inspired me to uh, look into more of his uh, history. So uh, thank you. Cool. Great. Thanks, Lynn and Alan and my. Hey, cool. Zoe. Zoe. Hi, Gramps. Hi. Hi. Your grandparents. Hey, listen. <laughs> Thanks so much, you know, for bringing that energy to us, uh, especially on this day. Really uh, wonderful connections. Wonderful. Wonderful to see you all. I'm sort of, uh, I would like for the people who, uh, are logged in uh, that have their video shut off. If they would start their video, because I'm really interested in seeing the faces of the people that are here. All right, we have a request from my grandpa to turn your videos on. <laughs> turn it on. Thanks. Grandpa, it's Mother's Father's Day. Own... It's, not, um, it's not Grandfather's Day, but you can make a request. Oh, cool. We, um, Regina is here. We have a um, a, a, a person who we actually stayed in her house in oh. Ture, oh, um, in Transylvania, and, and her family like graciously hosted us last summer. Um, and so, so she was tuning in. Hi, Regina. Um, Hi. Hi. Thank you for tuning in. That's so it nice. It was really nice to hear you. Sorry, but I can't turn on my camera because... Uh, That's okay. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> worry about it. Thank you so much. It was really me. nice to hear your music. And I'm, um, I'm happy to see that how many people are interested in our culture. It's nice to see it. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes. I, would, I would encourage um, 
if anyone wants to learn more about Transylvanian culture, check out like some videos of like an actual bracha, which is not not this, but like it's really impressive. When you see a great Brachash playing, it's very inspiring. The violinists, oh, Becca has one. Oh, the violinists nice. from that part of the world are just like the most amazing ever. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great, it's a really rich place culturally, and and amazing to have Regina here who lives there. It's very cool. It was a nice opportunity for me to thank. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So I guess we'll we'll sign off. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Thanks again. Stay in touch. Remember to tip your musicians and leave us your email if you want to know about future concerts like this and Denver concerts as well. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, thank you, Have everyone, for tuning thank in. You. Uh, thank you. It's Good wonderful day. seeing your faces. Yeah. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, friends. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Leaving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.